Yashar, Jasher, 40. And the sons of Yaakov led away all the spoil of Gaash and went out of the city by night. They were going out, marching toward the castle of Beit Koran, and the inhabitants of Beit Koran were going to the castle to meet them. And on that night, the sons of Yaakov fought with the inhabitants of Beit Koran in the castle of Beit Koran. And all the inhabitants of Beit Koran were mighty men. One of them would not flee from before a thousand men, and they fought on that night upon the castle. And their shouts were heard on that night from afar, and the earth quaked at their shouting. And all the sons of Yaakov were afraid of those men, as they were not accustomed to fight in the dark, and they were greatly confounded. And the sons of Yaakov cried unto Yahuwah, saying, Give help to us, O Yahuwah, deliver us, that we may not die by the hands of these uncircumcised men. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of the sons of Yaakov, and Yahuwah caused great terror and confusion to seize the people of Beit Koran. And they fought amongst themselves, the one with the other, in the darkness of night, and smote each other in great numbers. And the sons of Yaakov, knowing that Yahuwah had brought a ruach of perverseness amongst those men, and that they fought each man with his neighbor, went forth from among the bands of the people of Beit Koran, and went as far as the descent of the castle of Beit Koran, and farther, and they tarried there securely with their young men on that night. And the people of Beit Koran fought the whole night, one man with his brother and the other with his neighbor, and they cried out in every direction upon the castle, and their cry was heard at a distance, and the whole earth shook at their voice, for they were powerful above all the people of the earth. And all the inhabitants of the cities of Kena'anim, the Chitim, the Emorim, the Chivim, and all the kings of Kena'an, and also those who were on the other side of the Yardan, heard the noise of the shouting on that night. And they said, Surely these are the battles of the Ivrim who are fighting against the seven cities who came nigh unto them. And who can stand against those Ivrim? And all the inhabitants of the cities of the Kena'anim and all those who were on the other side of the Yardan were greatly afraid of the sons of Yaakov, for they said, Behold, the same will be done to us as was done to those cities, for who can stand against their mighty strength? And the cries of the Koronim were very great on that night and continued to increase. And they smote each other till morning, and numbers of them were killed. And the morning appeared, and all the sons of Yaakov rose up at daybreak and went up to the castle, and they smote those who remained of the Choronim in a terrible manner, and they were all killed in the castle. And the sixth day appeared, and all the inhabitants of Canaan saw at a distance all the people of Beit Koran lying dead in the castle of Beit Koran, and strewed about 
as the carcasses of lambs and goats. And the sons of Yaakov led all the spoil which they had captured from Gaash and went to Bayat Karan. And they found the city of people like the sand of the sea. Rather, they found the city full of people like the sand of the sea. And they fought with them. And the sons of Yaakov smote them there till evening time. And the sons of Yaakov did unto Bayat Karan as they had done to Gaash and Tapnach and as they had done to Chazar, to Sartan and to Shiloh. And the sons of Yaakov took with them the spoil of Bayat Karan and all the spoil of the cities. And on that day they went home to Shechem. And the sons of Yaakov came home to the city of Shechem, and they remained without the city, and they then rested there from the war, and tarried there all night. And all their servants, together with all the spoil that they had taken from the cities, they left without the city, and they did not enter the city. For they said, Perchance there may be yet more fighting against us, and they may come to besiege us in Shechem. And Yaakov and his sons and their servants remained on that night and the next day in the portion of the field which Yaakov had purchased from Chamor for five shekels. And all that they had captured was with them. And all the booty which the sons of Yaakov had captured was in the portion of the field, immense as the sand upon the seashore. And the inhabitants of the land observed them from afar, and all the inhabitants of the land were afraid of the sons of Yaakov who had done this thing. For no king from the days of old had ever done, like, done the like. And the seven kings of the Canaanim resolved to make peace with the sons of Yaakov, for they were greatly afraid of their lives on account of the sons of Yaakov. And on that day, being the seventh day, Yahfia, king of Hebron, sent secretly to the king of Ai, and to the king of Grivan, and to the king of Shelem, and to the king of Adulam, and to the king of Lachish, and to the king of Chazar, and to all the Canaanite kings who were under their subjection, saying, Go up with me, and come to me, that we may go to the sons of Yaakov. And I will make peace with them, and form a treaty with them, lest all your lands be destroyed by the swords of the sons of Yaakov, as they did to Shechem and the cities around it, as you have heard and seen. And when you come to me, do not come with many men, but let every king Bring his three head captains, and every captain bring three of his officers. And come all of you to Hebron, and we will go together to the sons of Yaakov, and supplicate them that they shall form a treaty of peace with us. And all those kings did as the king of Hebron had said to them, for they were all under his counsel and command. And all the kings of Canaan assembled to go to the sons of Yaakov to make peace with them. And the sons of Yaakov returned and went to the portion of the field that was in Shechem, for they did not put confidence 
in the kings of the land. And the sons of Yaakov returned and remained in the portion of the field ten days, and no one came to make war with them. And when the sons of Yaakov saw that there was no appearance of war, they all assembled and went to the city of Shechem, and the sons of Yaakov remained in Shechem. And at the expiration of forty days, all the kings of the Amorim assembled from all their places and came to Hebron, to Yahfia, king of Hebron. And the number of kings that came to Hebron to make peace with the sons of Yaakov was 21 kings. And the number of captains that came with them was 69. And their men were 189. And all these kings and their men rested by Mount Hebron. And the king of Hebron went out with his three captains and nine men, and these kings resolved to go to the sons of Yaakov to make peace. And they said unto the king of Hebron, Go you before us with your men, and speak for us unto the sons of Yaakov, and we will give, rather, we will come after you and confirm your words. And the king of Hebron did so. And the sons of Yaakov heard that all the kings of Canaan had gathered together and rested in Hebron, and the sons of Yaakov sent four of their servants as spies, saying, Go and spy these kings, and search and examine their men, whether they are few or many. And if they are but few in number, number them all and come back. And the servants of Yaakov went secretly to these kings and did as the sons of Yaakov had commanded them. And on that day they came back to the sons of Yaakov and said unto them, We came unto those kings, and they are but few in number. And we numbered them all, and behold, they were two hundred and eighty-eight kings and men. And the sons of Yaakov said, They are but few in number, therefore we will not all go out to them. And in the morning the sons of Yaakov rose up and chose sixty-two of their men, and ten of the sons of Yaakov went with them. And they girt on their weapons of war, for they said, They are coming to make war with us, for they knew not that they were coming to make peace with them. And the sons of Yaakov went with their servants to the gate of Shechem toward those kings, and their father Yaakov was with them. And when they had come forth, behold, the king of Hebron and his three captains and nine men with him were coming along the road against the sons of Yaakov. And the sons of Yaakov lifted up their eyes and saw at a distance Yahfiya, king of Hebron, with his captains coming toward them. And the sons of Yaakov took their stand at the place of the gate of Shechem and did not proceed. And the king of Hebron continued to advance, he and his captains, until he came nigh to the sons of Yaakov, and he and his captains bowed down to them to the ground. And the king of Hebron sat with his captains before Yaakov and his sons. And the sons of Yaakov said unto him, What has befallen you, O king of Hebron? Why have you come to us this day? What do you require from us? And the king of Hebron said unto Yaakov, I beseech you, my lord, 
all the kings of the Canaanim have this day come to make peace with you. And the sons of Yaakov heard the words of the king of Hebron, and they would not consent to his proposals, for the sons of Yaakov had no belief in him, for they imagined that the king of Hebron had spoken deceitfully to them. And the king of Hebron knew from the words of the sons of Yaakov that they did not believe his words, and the king of Hebron approached nearer to Yaakov and said unto him, I beseech you, my lord, to be assured that all these kings have come to you on peaceable terms, for they have not come with all their men. Neither did they bring their weapons of war with them, for they have come to seek peace from my lord and his sons. And the sons of Yaakov answered the king of Hebron, saying, Send you to all these kings, and if you speak truth unto us, let them each come singly before us. And if they come unto us unarmed, we shall then know that they seek peace from us. And Yahfia, king of Hebron, sent one of his men to the kings, and they all came before the sons of Yaakov, and bowed down to them to the ground. And these kings sat before Yaakov and his sons, and they spoke unto them, saying, We have heard all that you did unto the kings of the Amorim with your sword and exceedingly mighty arm, so that no man could stand up before you. And we were afraid of you for the sake of our lives, lest it should befall us as it did to them. So we have come unto you to form a treaty of peace between us, and now therefore contract with us a covenant of peace and truth, that you will not meddle with us, inasmuch as we have not meddled with you. And the sons of Yaakov knew that they had really come to seek peace from them, and the sons of Yaakov listened to them and formed a covenant with them. And the sons of Yaakov swore unto them that they would not meddle with them. And all the kings of the Canaanim swore also to them. And the sons of Yaakov made them tributary from that day forward. And after this all, the captains of these kings came with their men before Yaakov, with presents in their hands for Yaakov and his sons, and they bowed down to him to the ground. And these kings then urged the sons of Yaakov and begged of them to return all the spoil they had captured from the seven cities of the Emorim, and the sons of Yaakov did so. And they returned all that they had captured, the women, the little ones, the cattle, and all the spoil which they had taken. And they sent them off, and they went away each to his city. And all these kings again bowed down to the sons of Yaakov, and they sent or brought them many gifts in those days. And the sons of Yaakov sent off these kings and their men, and they went peaceably away from them to their cities. And the sons of Yaakov also returned to their home, to Shechem. And there was peace from that day forward between the sons of Yaakov and the kings of the Canaanim until the children of Yashara'el came to inherit the land of Canaan.